We now come to the point in the test design where we have to consider multiple parameters. We've done equivalence classing and boundary values for each individual parameter, and now we have to consider if the program behaves correctly for all parameters considered together. The first technique we're going to be looking at is decision tables. What's a decision table? Well, it's a table that maps multiple input and output variables in so-called rules. If you look at the graphic on the right, it's a screenshot from a little tool. You see here in the blue parameters and actions, so blue and green parameters and actions are columns, and here you see values. What this means is basically if you look at this test case number one, if parameter one is yes, two is yes, three is yes, then you want action one to happen and action three. Parameter one is no, two is no, three, we don't care, then action two is supposed to happen. So you specify what is supposed to happen and also what, of course, you're going to be testing as a set of cases or rules for combinations. So this is a way to specify combinations here, a set of parameters that you identified before and their possible values. Now these decision tables obviously specify all combinations and the required actions for those parameters. This, of course, implies that you can use those decision tables only when the number of parameters and values is relatively small. So, for instance, when you have five parameters, when it gets too big, the, uh, the resulting test case applying is, and then you basically come to exhaustive testing, is basically impossible. But still, it's a good way to cover small cases of interconnected parameters and sometimes actually even, even as a specification tool. A few more things are important about decision tables. So number one is, I already mentioned those don't care values. A dash here in a certain value means that the parameter value doesn't matter for the rule to apply. So it means that if parameter one is no, parameter two is no, three doesn't matter anymore, action two is supposed to happen. This reduces, of course, the number of rules or things you have to cover because this value here doesn't matter anymore. This leads to the next question of completeness. When is a table complete? When are you? How can you know if you forgot a case or not? If you think about this in general, let's say you have three parameters that can be yes and no, then you have two to the power of three, or in generalized terms, two to the power of n possible cases to cover because you have to co cover all combinations. What the tool here does for you is it observes the number of distinct values, in this case only yes and no, but if you do ABC, this number would be three here and then from that computes by product the number of test cases, in this case eight, to be needed for completeness. And here we see that we only have six. And why is that? Well, this is only one case, obviously. The dash here means that two cases are covered. No, no, yes, and no, 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 because parameter three can be yes and no. So this one rule covers two cases, if you will, so two parameter combinations. So the tool gives you that in data and then you can see if you're complete or not. But this way it helps you to come to a sense of completeness and see if you forgot something. Now let's look at an example of how to use it in practice. A program is to be tested that is defining the rules for when and how checking accounts can be opened and what the conditions are. And this text here that you can see here in the box below is actually uh, yeah, free form specification that defines what the program is supposed to do and now you have to figure out how to test this. So take a minute to read this. So you see that certain things, conditions apply, that there's a talking of minors and parents and overdraft limits and so forth. How do you go about this? Well, the first thing you know, need to do is find the variables and the actions. And this is typically not that you just have to go through the text and mark them. So in this case, if you think about the actions, then you the, we mark them green. The uh, var variables, parameters in this case, we marked blue. And you see here then we have the variable identity card, minor, consent, and so forth. If you put this into a table, you see this picture that you have variables, has ID, this is number one here, identity card, applicant is legally an adult, 
that is this thing here, but minor is actually the inverse, so minor is the opposite of legally an adult. That's why those two are converged into this one variable. Then there is the point of consent of their parents that the minors need, so that's another variable. And finally, the credit check is put as a parameter, so it can be yes and no. And each of those are possibly, that can be yes and no. And then we have three actions that we looked at. Consider we open account, overdraft limit, and then we just also say reject applicant. We send him a letter, sorry, or something like that, that was just uh, thrown in as a little more detail. If you look at the solution here, you see that when an account, when an applicant doesn't have an ID, if you look down here, nothing else matters. When they don't have an ID, you have to reject them. And this is the meaning of the first sentence. So basically you kind of go by sentence by sentence and try to apply the rules and, and to write down what they mean and try to fill the table. In this case you see here that each of those values have two distinct values. The parameters have two distinct values that gives you 16 cases to cover and which you also have. Why? Because those three don't cares cover eight cases and then here you have those dashes that each mean two cases now let's look at this one again to show what it means if you do have an ID and the applicant is not an adult so it's a minor then they do need the consent of the parent and if they don't get it that is rejected but if they do get it then they get an account but they don't get an overdraft because minors don't get an overdraft and so forth so this is how you can write down conditions and actions that are supposed to happen based on this. There is also a little application, the, the uh, Excel, that you can look at the tool that also has this as a sample in it, and you can play with it a little bit. This concludes the section on decision tables. Again, as a summary, you can say that decision tables can be used to cover a few parameters, and they basically do exhaust test exhaustive testing definition of all combinations, and therefore, of course, it works only for small parameters, small number of parameters.